I'm Romy. And I'm here today because I think the world is full of shit. There's shit music on the radio. There's crap TV all over the place. There are terrible products everywhere that are just clogging up our lives. And with all this crap around, it's just taking away from the richness of the lives that we can live. It's taking away from our potential. Why? I think there are two reasons. The first is time. It takes time to sift through volumes of crap to find something that's actually valuable, that's actually meaningful to us, that can actually do something for us. I believe that most of us are spending far more time looking for things than we are actually listening to the music or watching the movies or experiencing the things that can make our lives better. Time gives us freedom. And freedom makes us happy. And for that reason, time is just one of our most precious assets. The second reason why crap is bad is that it's drowning out the things which are actually valuable. The things that are actually meaningful are lost in this deep ocean of stuff that is really meaningless. And that's a real problem. The things that can actually make an impact, being lost in that ocean, are, I believe, as a musician and an engineer, things which stem from creativity and technology. And they serve to do one thing. They serve to enhance people's experience of life, their experience of the real world, not of the digital world that we've been sucked into, the real world. Now, we live in an age, we're very lucky to live in an age, where there are more incredible technologies, more amazingly powerful creative works being produced than ever before. Yet most of them aren't being experienced by people because they're lost. They're totally lost. And I think that's because we also live in an age where it is easier to distribute than it has ever been before. Kevin just spoke about sharing. We live in a connected world where it is easy to get your idea out no matter what it is. You can get it out to people so easily. And that leads to poor quality. It leads to poor quality because people will have these ideas, create these things which are maybe unrefined, which aren't particularly creative or don't solve some technical challenge. And they push them out to the world, just filling up that ocean of crap that drowns out the things that are valuable. And this problem is amplified. It's amplified by the fact that the world's most artistic people, the world's most technically talented people, are creatives. They want to make stuff. It's a different mindset from wanting to take things out into the world. On a similar note, the best entrepreneurs in the world, the people who are best at taking ideas from creation to impact, are often not the most artistically or technically talented. Again, it's a different mindset. Entrepreneurs have a tendency to do something like this. They'll think, they'll come up with an idea, and that line over the top right there is putting it out into the world to see if it might work. And if it works, you make money. Great. And if you don't, you go back and you think of another idea, and you try it in the market. If it doesn't work, you go back, you have another idea, you try it in the market. And that process of Trying it in the market over and over and over is one of the things in the startup world which is filling our lives with crap. Venture capital's caught on to this, the fact that entrepreneurial people tend to go in this cycle. And as a result, it's changed its model. It's changed from managing technology risk to managing market risk. Now, VC was formed a couple decades ago. It was formed as an industry to invest in risky technologies, things which had the potential to make a huge impact on the world, but that might not end up working. But today they're investing in a completely different type of risk. They're investing in the risk of an idea potentially being adopted at scale, not the risk of a very early stage technology eventually becoming impactful. The music industry does something very similar. A lot of the music we hear on the radio, not all, there are exceptions, but the vast majority of it comes from people who were easy to bring to market, artists who were convenient to bring to market, not those which are most artistically, artistically talented. Why? Because our really artistically talented people 
it's hard. It takes effort to nurture them and bring them to the point of being market ready. So VCs and music managers and other key decision makers around the world are doing something very, very similar to what we all do at home. We buy pens. We buy lots of pens. I guarantee everyone in this room has seen a drawer like this just filled with pens. They're cheap, they're disposable, we don't care if we lose them. Why? Because we always have another. We could buy a Mont Blanc. It's beautiful. It has amazing grip, it's like etched around the side. It has refillable like ink cartridges and stuff. We can make it do whatever we could ever want as a pen, and it'll last a lifetime. But we don't. What do we do? We buy Bix. Lots of Bix. VCs invest in Bix. Each pen in this pack is one company in the average venture capitalist portfolio. It's breakable. It's disposable. It's probably going to stop working at some point. But hopefully, VCs just hope that one of these pens will last long enough to write themselves a check at the end of their fund. And that brings us to a new definition of quality versus quantity. It's an age-old saying. It used to refer to the difference between something that was handmade, that was handcrafted, that was custom-tailored, built for you, versus something that was mass-produced. But today we live in an age where the most mass-produced things are often the highest quality. You'll take the iPhone, for example. Try having a tinker or make you a better smartphone. It's not going to happen. So quality versus quantity is still a very valid argument but it is referring to something different. It's not referring to production quantity, the quantity in which something is produced. It's referring to the quantity of ideas that surrounds us, the number of things that are in our lives versus the quality of, of those things. We've mastered the art of producing lots of ideas and taking them out to the world, and we have not mastered the art of making them high quality. So what is quality? I believe there are three rules to quality. The first, as Kevin mentioned as well, is that it has to be substantially unique. Something that is high quality must either have nothing like it in the world, or it must be so different that it can make so much more of an impact than anything else that's out there. Secondly, it must possess meaningful technological innovation or creative power. It must do something meaningful. And thirdly, it must enhance people's experience of the real world. It must enhance their lives. I have a vision that one day we will be able to leave a room like this and go home and want to listen to music or watch a movie, or something like that, and we won't spend any time looking for anything. It'll just be there. The music that means something to us, the movies that are powerful, the products that can change our lives will just come to us because they're valuable. But in a world full of shit, that's really hard to do. We're so far, but we can still do something and we can still, we still have a chance of, of bringing quality back to our world. Now in order to know what we can do, we first need to know who we are. I think there's four types of people. I've spoken about creators, musicians, artists, technologists, engineers, people who turn their ideas into something real. Then there are enablers. There's the venture capitalists, the music managers, the key decision makers high up in big companies. There are supporters. Let's say you work in a big company. You're part of a system that is taking things from ideation to impact. You might not be creating or enabling yourself, but you're part of the process. You're supporting that movement. Then there are consumers. All of you, every single person in this world is a consumer of technological impact and of creativity. But we are also all of these three things. Every single person can create, can support, and enable. And the role that we choose to play is completely up to us. But fundamentally, all of us fit into this bracket. So remember that quality is unique. It is meaningful. And it's experiential. So what can you do? 
If you're an investor, I ask that you invest by these qualities. If you're an engineer or a scientist, I ask that in whatever you do, you ask yourself, if you are leading towards something which is going to produce something for the world which possesses these characteristics of quality. If you're a creative, make something powerful that touches people. If you're not doing those things in what you do, or you're a supporter of something which is not producing something that possesses these characteristics of quality, I want you to stop. Take a step back and think of something that does possess these characteristics. Find something. Find something that means a lot to you, that could change your life. And then commit your time in, in creating, supporting, or enabling that thing from ideation through to impact on the world. What I'd love for you to be able to take away from, from this talk today is a new perspective on quality. And with that perspective, I hope that you will apply it to determine what you will create, what you will support, and what you will enable in every day going forwards. And always ask yourself, are you a Mont Blanc or are you just a Bic? Thank you very much. <laughs>